The Alienware M15R2 is a thinner machine with some powerful hardware inside. So just how hot does it run, and does this cause any problems? Let's find out and see what improvements can be made to thermals and performance. The M15R2 is available in different configurations. Mine has an Intel i7-9750H processor, Nvidia RTX 2080 Max-Q graphics, and 16GB of memory and dual channel, so expect different results with different specs. You can find updated prices for different configurations linked in the description. Air comes in from the bottom, in through the vents above the keyboard, and is exhausted out of the left and right sides towards the back, and rear left and right corners. There are a couple of fans inside, with heat pipes shared between the CPU and GPU. The Alienware Command Center software lets you select different performance modes, including quiet, cool, balanced, performance, and full speed. And these adjust fan speeds and power limits. There are also a couple of overclocking modes, 1 and 2, which overclock the GPU by these amounts. Thermals were tested with a 21 degrees Celsius ambient room temperature. Idle results down the bottom were on the warmer side, but no real issue with that. Worst case stress tests were done with the A to 64 CPU stress test with CPU only checked, and the Heaven benchmark at max settings at the same time. And gaming was tested with Watch Dogs 2, as I find it to use a good combination of processor and graphics. The CPU would run up to 100 degrees Celsius, however I'm showing average temperatures here, as it would throttle back down a bit once 100 was hit, making 99 the highest reported average. No GPU thermal throttling was seen during any of this testing. The lowest quiet mode was the coolest, then cool mode was a little warmer. Balanced and performance modes were about the same, then enabling full speed boosts the CPU power limit. So the CPU temperature rises as a result, though undervolting and using a cooling pad was able to help here, granted more so in the game than the stress test. These are the average clock speeds while running the same tests. We're able to hit the 4GHz all-core turbo boost speed in the game by undervolting, while the stress test is almost capable of full speed when adding in the cooling pad. The GPU speeds don't change much while under stress test, however they progressively improve more when actually playing this game. The CPU clock speeds are basically the same in cool and quiet modes, then again at balanced and performance modes. This is because of the power limits. We can see Cool and Quiet cap the processor to 25 watts, while Balanced and Performance seem to run at 33.75 watts. Full speed mode sets PL1 to 80 watts. So basically, thermal throttling will become the limit by design, whereas we were power limit throttling prior to this. This explains the higher temperatures earlier. The GPU wattage was interesting. Despite running with a 90 watt limit in full speed mode, it would actually boost to 100 watts in balanced and performance modes, which is why we have those mid 90 averages. I'm guessing because the processor has its power limit capped here, more power is allowed to be assigned to the GPU instead. Let's actually see how games perform with these different settings. I've tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the highest setting preset using the game's benchmark tool. As this is a GPU heavy test and our GPU power limit is basically always fairly high regardless of setting mode, we're still able to hit 80 FPS even with quiet mode, while undervolting in full performance mode got us a couple of extra frames. I thought the higher GPU power limit seen in performance mode might have given it an edge, but nope, full speed did better. Playing more CPU intensive games like Watch Dogs 2 worked alright in quiet mode too, so gaming there was possible for both CPU and GPU demanding titles. If you want to see more gaming benchmarks from the M15R2, check the card in the top right or link in the description where I've tested 20 games at all setting levels. Now let's take a look at a CPU only workload with the GPU idle. Here are the clock speeds while running the A to 64 CPU stress test with all the default options checked. So we could only hit the 4GHz all core turbo speed with the undervolt in place. Thermal throttling was taking place in balanced mode and above. However the undervolt was able to reduce temperatures a little, and this is because less power was needed to hit full speed. Here are some Cinebench results to give you an idea of CPU only performance when the GPU is idle. The results when undervolted are actually very nice for this test. This is basically a best case 9750H score, at least for multi-core. And that's because the 4GHz all core turbo was constantly being hit with the undervolt in place. It was running in the mid 90 degree range, but this is simply due to the higher power limits that are possible in CPU only workloads. As for the external temperatures where you'll actually be putting your hands, at idle it was in the mid 30s in the center but warmer up the back. With the stress tests running in quiet mode, it gets to around 50 in the center, but that seems to be in between the keys as the keys themselves felt okay. Cool mode didn't see too much difference, balanced mode was also pretty similar, 
and performance mode was again not too different, hitting the lower 50s in the middle. It's a little cooler with full speed owing to the higher fan speed. Let's have a listen to how loud it gets. At idle in quiet mode, it was completely silent. There was some extremely subtle coil whine, but this wasn't noticeable once the fans were going. With the stress tests going in quiet mode, it's still on the quieter side. Cool was a little louder, balanced and performance were a little louder still, though about the same as each other. Full speed mode was strange. When you first enable it, the fans spin up louder to about 58 decibels, which is quite loud. However, it only lasts for a few seconds before spinning down to around 52 decibels, which is where it remained indefinitely. This is strange because full speed isn't actually giving us full speed. While it does for the first few seconds, then it slows down. Granted, the slowed down speed is still faster than any other mode, it can clearly go faster. I tried making a custom fan profile in the Alienware Command Center software and set both to max speed, but I had the same issue as the full speed profile. Considering thermals can run hotter in this machine due to the high power limits, it would have been good if we could actually utilize these faster fans if we want to. Considering that the M15R2 is around 2cm thick and is paired with some pretty good specs, I don't think these results are too bad here. Yes, it can get hot, however this seems to be down to the higher power limits that are configured. Many other laptops will just cap the processor wattage to 45 watts and call it a day. However, in full speed mode, the M15 is able to push beyond this. This means higher performance is available, but at the expense of thermals. It's a trade-off. But there is also the option of running a lower performance mode if you want to stay cooler. This is why we saw thermal throttling with temperatures up to 100 degrees being hit, which is more than I'd be comfortable with long term. Granted, these are worst case tests, and as we saw, improvements could be made. This behavior also seems to introduce inconsistent CPU performance. In CPU-only workloads like Cinebench, it was fine. But when combining CPU and GPU load together, the CPU would throttle back a fair bit once it hit the 100 degree mark. I think this could explain the lower 1% low result in Battlefield 5. Although the average FPS is well up there due to the 2080 Max-Q GPU with good power limit, the 1% low seems to suffer and is behind many other machines. Additionally, performance at lower setting levels where the CPU matters more occasionally dipped back a bit, and I think this is a result of it backing down as the cap gets hit. For example, once it hit 100 degrees Celsius in a test, it would drop back to 90 briefly, then back to 95, 98, and 100. These are fairly big swings that will affect clock speed and thereby performance. So faster fan speed, undervolting, or using a cooling pad should help with that. And as we've seen, using these techniques could give us fair improvements. These differences in performance shown aren't hard and fast rules. There are different factors which will vary results, primarily the temperature of the room you're running in, application of thermal paste, and even the specific hardware which comes down to the silicon lottery. You may not be able to overclock or undervolt as much as me. It depends on the chip and its specific power requirements. So you'll have to do some testing to find out what's best for your hardware. It may be possible to further improve temperatures by swapping the thermal paste. However, as this is a review unit that I have to send back, I'm not able to change the paste. Otherwise, the next reviewer will unknowingly report different results due to what I've done. Let me know what you thought about the thermals from the Alienware M15R2 gaming laptop down in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, you'll definitely want to get subscribed for the upcoming full review to see everything this machine has to offer.